while back, when we were discussing carbon chains, I mentioned that we had to think about a prefix and a suffix. Hopefully, you're now a prefix expert, but it's time we gave a little bit of attention to the second part of the name. Now, throughout your journey, you may have noticed that not all organic compounds are simply made up of carbons and hydrogens. In fact, hydrogens contribute very little to the properties of a compound. Instead, it is all the unique variations of the limbs on our carbon backbones which give organic compounds their true character. So what happens when we see an OH instead of just an H? Or two bonds connecting our carbons instead of one? All of these anomalies are called functional groups and are what define our compounds. Hopefully, you're beginning to see where I'm getting with this. While the number of carbons gives the prefix to the compound names, it is the functional group which gives the suffix. A group of compounds that all have the same functional group is called a homologous series. For example, alcohols are a homologous series. They all have the same functional group and the difference between different alcohols is the length of the carbon chain. This will become clearer as we work through naming some different homologous groups. To start off with though, we'll look at a group called alkanes, which are the simplest of the organic compounds. An alkane is just a chain of carbon atoms covalently linked together, and since each carbon needs its four bonds, bonds that aren't attached to another carbon get attached to a hydrogen. The simplest alkane is only one carbon, and we call it methane. The prefix meth corresponds to the number one, and the suffix ane corresponds to the type of organic compound. Methane for alkane, see? The next alkane is called ethane, with two carbons in its carbon chain. Can you predict what this will look like? The prefix eth corresponds to two. Remembering the prefixes is super helpful when it comes to naming and drawing molecules. Sounds simple enough? Unfortunately, even alkanes can get a little more complicated than we bargained for. Remember when we talked about the carbon chain branching off in different directions? We need to not only recognize this, but account for it in the name of our compound. A branched carbon group containing one carbon is called a methyl group and a branched group containing two is called an ethyl group. Notice the pattern? If we refer to our prefix table from long ago, we will be reminded that a branched group made up of three carbons will be a propyl group. So any time we come across a carbon coming off another carbon that's not part of the primary chain, we need to give its name and location in the compound name. And to make things even simpler, we put this at the start. So an alkane compound with a primary chain of six carbons and an additional carbon group on the second carbon in is called 2-methylhexane. If there were two methyl groups coming off the second carbon, it would be called 2-2-dimethylhexane. Dimethyl as in there are two groups, and 2-2 to show that both methyl groups are attached to the second carbon of the primary chain. This way of numbering is the same for all functional groups. Some compounds look a lot like alkanes, but have a carbon double bonded to another carbon, which we call alkenes. The double bond is the functional group. You can probably guess how these will be named by now. One with five carbons, and the double bond between carbons two and three, like this, will be called pentene. Pent, since there are five carbons, and ene, since there's a double bond, so it's an alkene. Since the functional group is between carbons 2 and 3, we actually call this pent-2-ene, since there are other places the double bond could be, and we want to name this structure specifically. Again, we name from the end closest to the functional group, so the carbon on the right is carbon number 1, and the lowest number carbon that the double bond is attached to is carbon number 2. Some compounds are again very similar to alkanes and alkenes, but there's a triple bond instead of a double as the functional group. We call these alkynes. As you can probably guess, their suffix will be "-ine". As we talk about different types of compounds in coming videos, 
we will describe each of their specific suffixes. But for now, it's important that you understand how the pattern works. To summarize, the general rule for naming an organic compound is, first, count the carbons in the chain and work out your prefix. Second, identify any branch groups and name them at the start of the compound. And third, identify any functional groups and choose the suffix to fit.